Hello, and welcome to the 90s Week by Week, where we are going through each and every week in the 90s in chronological order. I'm your host, Brandon, coming at you from Grubby's Private Bar. Each episode, we bring on a different guest to go through the pop culture and events of the week we're taking a look at. On this episode, we'll be covering the week of February the 25th through March the 3rd in the year 1990. We'll go over various topics from these dates, pausing between each to discuss them with our guest. This episode, we're joined by Brittany Browse. Hey, Britt. How are you today? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Before we start, let me ask, what might you have been doing on any given night or day in early 1990? Probably watching wrestling with my little brother or kicking a soccer ball up against Covington Elementary School and trying to avoid the windows. Avoid hate? Did it work? Did you ever hit a window? No, I didn't. Did your brother? No. Did he kick with you or was it you by yourself? No, uh, pretty much me by myself. What grade were you in in early 1990? Fifth. Fifth grade. Fifth grade? Yes. Good experience? Bad experience? Um, it was a, a period of adjustment. Yeah. I had just moved to Covington from Indianapolis with a broken arm. Big city to small city. How'd mm-hmm. you break your arm? Uh, I tripped over the pitcher's mound. Um, I was such a stellar softball player that my dad had me playing uh, pitcher and then backpedal to shortstop. And I was going for a fly ball and... Yeah, I tripped over the pitcher's mound and... Landed on your elbow? I did. I did. That was traumatic. No, it really was. Did you did you move in at the beginning of the school year? I did. I did. It was... Uh, the beginning yes. of this year? Of your fifth grade year? Yeah, the summer before fifth grade. Did you like it better or worse? At first, I was really missing Indy in Valley Mills Elementary. All right. Well, now that we've established what you might have been doing in 1990, let's take a look at music so that we can hit on it. The top song for February the 25th through March the 2nd was Opposites Attract by Paula Abdul, and then on March the 3rd, Escapade by Janet Jackson took over the top spot. The top 10 for this week were Number 10, No More Lies by Michelet, Number 9, Black Velvet by Alana Miles, Number 8, We Can't Go Wrong by The Cover Girls, Number 7, Price of Love by Bad English, Number 6, Here We Are by Gloria Stefan. Number five, All or Nothing by Millie Vanilli. Number four, Rome, the B-52s. Number three, Opposites Attract by Paula Abdul. Number two, Dangerous by Roxette. And number one was Escapade by Janet Jackson. The top rap song for this week was Expression by Salt and Peppa, and the top country song was No Matter How High by the Oak Ridge Boys. Also of note in music this week, On February the 27th, Wilson Phillips released their single, Hold On, and Alan Jackson released his album, Here in the Real World, on the same day. A couple songs make their first appearance on the 90s Week by Week this episode. Are you familiar with No More Lies by Michelet? I am not. Neither was I. No. Never even heard of it. No. What about Black Velvet? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Are you stopping on the radio station if it's playing? Yes. You are? Yes. You're a a Black Velvet fan? She really digs deep for that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of emotion in that song. Speaking of, I noticed in the Black Velvet video, she appears to be singing Black Velvet while wearing black leather. Should Alana Miles be tried in the court of 90s irony? No. You think it was all about textures and textiles and no. So you could, you could sing about Velvet yeah. while wearing leather? Absolutely. Do you know she's Canadian? No, I did not know that. I didn't know that either. It's part of the fun of doing this. I get to learn things yeah. like that. What about Escapade, which took over the top spot this week? Are you stopping on it? Yes, and I have a story. It was on um, top 10. Cannot remember the radio station, but my mom in her safari minivan, we were helping my dad, after they divorced, helping my dad move some stuff into his apartment. And I had the radio cranked on that song, and it was loud enough for me to shut the sliding door on my mom's finger and not hear her screams because I could still, I was listening to the song, but uh, I could hear my dad's yelling, calling me choice names for the... <laughs> Did you break anything? Just my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Did you slam the door? Oh, it, it, yes, oh. it slammed. It got her good. Oh my God. Yes. Was it because you were vibing so hard with the song, it, like that energy was. came through yes. in your slam? Mm-hmm. Wow. Did yes. you get in trouble? By my dad. That's hilarious. That's a great story. 
Well, it wasn't funny to read up, but go ahead. Did that? Mo- did you do you associate that with that song now? Absolutely. Every time you hear Escapade, you hear your mom silent scream. Mm-hmm. And the van door shutting. Yes. And then your dad's actual scream. Yes. <laughs> What about your mom? If she heard that song, is that what she would think of? <laughs> I don't think so. Does she know you correlate the two? No. Has it ever came up? You've never said that? No. No. All you right. Just keep it locked up, locked tight. Yeah. What were you listening to in early 1990? Can you can you picture yourself moving into that house in Covington and having any music going on, like as you're doing your room for the first time or whatever? Which, um, which would have been late 89, early 90, but right. we'll count it. This will be really disappointing to you. I was not... I Because I grew up on oldies, um, I really was not listening to any current modern day, any of that stuff. So I would have been listening to like Del Shannon, Dancing in the Streets, yeah, Martha and the Vandellas. That's not disappointing. That's very similar to my experience. Yeah. Because I care more about like what your 1990 was like than I care about what was going on in 1990. You know what I mean? Yes. I would have been falling asleep to like Simon and Garfunkel. Oh. You know? A lot deeper than <laughs> I was. No, <laughs> I wasn't thinking deeply about it. It's just what I was allowed to listen to because everything else really got burned at a church function. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. I think I bought a black market copy of "Shout at the Devil" and felt guilty and smashed it to pieces around this time. I understand. Yeah, I did, man. They were in deep. Or my mom paying extra to have MTV move removed yes. from our TV. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. That came up in my last episode how I didn't have MTV Mm-mm. until a lot later than everybody else. <laughs> Here in the real world was pretty much Alan Jackson's breakout album. Though it was with his next album, Alan Jackson was pretty much what got me started on 90s country. Did you listen to country in the 90s, and did it start this early for you? I did, but no, it did not. Any other memories about any of the music listed here in the top ten? I thought that I was a dancer, and I did do dances in the... We had a playroom. My brother and I's bedroom were upstairs, and you walked through my brother's room, and then we had a big room that was the playroom, and I did a lot of Paula Abdul dancing in there. Did you choreograph your own or were you mimicking the videos? Well, because we didn't have MTV, I choreographed my own. So you couldn't make your brother be the cat in the Opposites of Track video while you're Paula Abdul? No, he didn't want any part of that. All right, let's take a look at the movies. Okay. The top movie for February the 25th was Driving Miss Daisy, and then from February the 26th through March the 3rd, it was The Hunt for Red October. The top five movies for this week were number five, Born on the 4th of July, number 4, Madhouse, number 3, Hard to Kill, number 2, Driving Miss Daisy, and number 1, The Hunt for Red October. The Hunt for Red October shows up for the first time on the top 5 movies this week and immediately takes over the top spot. Any recollection of seeing that in the theaters or for the first time on video? I only remember, um, not on screen, but my dad owned a VHS copy. Of Hunt for Red October? Yes. It was very popular among our dads, our parents' age group, I believe. I had Have you seen it ever? No. No? No. I had not seen it ever until about a week ago, and I watched it in preparation for this episode, and it's a very good movie. Is it really? Oh, yeah. I think it's been in my queue, Mm -hmm. but I've never... You recommend it? Yes. Okay. Because I think my apprehension with it was, how can you take a bunch of guys in a submarine and make a couple hour good movie out of it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, it's very good. Very good. It's a Tom Clancy. I don't think I knew that. So the character that one of the bald ones, I believe, plays is played by Harrison Ford in Patriot Games and Clear and Present Danger. Okay. Jack Ryan, I think, is his name in the Clancy novels. And he's played by different people throughout, and Harrison Ford takes on that role. But it started uh. off with the bald one. Sean Connery plays a Russian submarine captain that wants to defect from the Russian Navy. Okay. And their submarine has capabilities that the U.S. isn't aware of yet. It can do spectacular things. So Connery has to figure out how to communicate with America in a way that doesn't get him busted, but lets them know I'm not a threat. I want to surrender myself and the crew to you guys. Okay. And then the guy that figures it out, Jack Ryan, has to convince his superiors that that's what's going on when they think they're a threat and just kind of want to like take them out if they have to. So the Russians are hunting it because they know that, that he's defected. At some point, they figured it out. So they're trying to take it out, and the Americans are just so it's... Like, Intriguing. Very. Any specific memories attached to any of these movies? Um, it's Hard to Kill. Is that a Seagal movie? Mm-hmm. I've never seen it, and I was going to watch it, but it's not free on any of the streaming services I have. I feel like, and I don't want to make things up, but I, something something in here tells me 
that my dad may have dragged me to the movies to see Hard to Kill. Yeah. Uh, because I have seen a lot of Seagal movies in theaters. Yeah. With my father, yes. Was your dad an action guy then like that? Very much so. Van Damme or Seagal? Seagal. For you or for him? Both. Yes. Yes. Because he's just so chill about his methods? Well, he's he's real life. Um, did you know that he actually works for the parish? Um, they don't call them counties in Louisiana. They call them parishes. And he is an actual law enforcement person in his parish. Steven Seagal is? Yes. I did not know that. All right. Let's take a look at the top ten in television. Okay. In television this week, the top ten were number ten, The Wonder Years, titled Glee Club. Number nine was Empty Nest with the title Goodbye, Mr. Dietz. Number eight was The Golden Girls with the title Sisters and Other Strangers. Number seven was The Incident, a made-for-television movie. Number six was A Different World with the title A Campfire Story. Number five was America's Funniest Home Videos. Number four was 60 Minutes. Number three was Cheers, which was a rerun. Number two was The Cosby Show, which was also a rerun. And number one was Roseanne with the title, To Tell the Truth. The cover of TV Guide this week said Challenger in large letters with the shuttle launching on the top and the crew in a large picture on the lower right. In the top corner it said, America relives the disaster. Down the right side it said, The Old Brady's versus the New, How the Camcorder is Changing the TV News, and The Remodeling of This Old House. On this week's episode of The Simpsons titled The Telltale Head, Bart removes the head of the statue of town founder Jebediah Springfield in an attempt to impress a group of friends he wants to be accepted by. When the backlash is more than he'd anticipated, he's caught red-handed by an angry mob when he attempts to put it back. On the Arsenio Hall show this week, the guests on February the 26th were Sandy Duncan and Wayne Gretzky, with musical guests being Tears for Fears. On February the 27th, the guest was Charlton Heston. Then on February the 28th, Lenny Kravitz and George Carlin were on. Sinbad was the guest on March the 1st. And then on March 2nd, Timothy Busfeld was a guest. On this week's Married with Children, Bud hatches a plan to get back at a girl at prom who humiliated him in the 6th grade by tricking him into skinny dipping before suspending his underwear from a flagpole. Al is invited to speak at the prom and takes the opportunity to warn the youth on the dangers of getting married. The title of the episode was What Goes Around Came Around. On Days of Our Lives this week, Kayla is found guilty of Marina's death and is sentenced to 15 years in prison. Jack still has pages he stole from Loretta's diary, and Isabella gives the diary to Roman to read. Wayne Gretzky in Tears for Fears, or Lenny Kravitz and George Carlin? Ooh. Obviously, I'm asking because they were Arsenio Hall episodes. Right. Again, are we talking now, my preference, or back then, probably, what would I have picked? Let's go with now. Uh, now, uh, Tears for Fears has some pretty good songs. Yeah. Um, not that Lenny doesn't, but I'm, I'm more into the Tears for Fears so, feel. So Tears for Fears gets the edge over Lenny Kravitz. What about yes. between Ray, Wayne Gretzky and George Carlin? George Carlin, hands down. Dude told it like it was. Yeah. If you could cross, that'd be optimal. Have George Carlin and Absolutely. Tears for Fears. Yes. Any memories or experiences with soap operas around this time? Um, I, I was just getting a taste of Days of Our Lives. Mm-hmm. Just just a little taste, just sticking my toe in the pond. <laughs> uh, little did I know that later on I would become a full throttle uh, Days of Our Lives. So taking your eventual love of, what can you call it, love of Days of Our Lives? Down forced the road. love. Forced love? Mm-hmm. Okay. Taking your understanding through that forced love mm-hmm. of Days of Our Lives and reapplying it to who was on it in early 1990, if you could be one of the women on Days of Our Lives... Which one would you be? Mar- Marlena. Marlena? Why Marlena? Hands down. Um, Are you going to say John Black? No, not at all. It, does, it has nothing to do with any male presence around her. She just, in my mind, commanded the screen. She was one of those women that you would just be like, she's got her stuff together. Like, she was always very well put together and just, she exuded confidence and... Marlena, hands down. She was a doctor, right? That's why John Black called her Doc. Am I wrong? No, dear, you are not wrong. So if you could be Marlena and pick any man on Days of Our Lives to be your suitor, who would it be? Bo. Bo? So we're, we're going with <clears throat> Bo and Marlena. Now, that I don't know that 
I don't think they ever had no, a flying bidet. No, that was never a thing. It was Bo and Hope. Bo and Bo Hope, Bo and Billy. Yes. Um, but Bo, he was uh, he was gruff. And he was pretty self-confident, too. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he always had his... He knew what he wanted. And... He did. <laughs> and, it, and it would have been Marlena had yes. he been on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Any other thoughts about... I don't. I mean, I I pick Days of Our Lives as the one that I give a synopsis of every episode because when I did tune into a soap opera, it was Days of Our Lives. Mm-hmm. Like that's the one I know and remember. I know a little bit about Young and the Restless, like Nikki. Yes. You know, and Victor was that her man. Yes. Nikki and Victor, like yeah, I have a little bit of knowledge of outside of Days of Our Lives, but it was primarily Days. On the Wonder Years, Kevin calls the new Glee Club teacher a lunatic. Did you have a teacher in the fifth grade that was a lunatic or that did something crazy? Uh, we had a substitute teacher. And I, I don't know if I wasn't familiar with nice-looking, attractive substitute teachers. I don't know. But uh, I remember going to the restroom. So Mrs. Boo's class was just right there adjacent to the restroom. But I made like a long swoop around to make sure that I got into Mrs. Everett's room. And I don't even know who I made eye contact with. And I'm really embarrassed saying the phrase that I said, our substitute teacher is the babe. <laughs> and the next day when Mrs. Boo came back verbatim, she was like, and Brittany, you don't go out in the hallway. And, and she mimicked me. <laughs> it was pretty. <laughs> so the other teacher heard you and related to oh, you. Oh, yes. Just... <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, so that was pretty embarrassing. But that was, other than that, I had a pretty pleasant experience with non-psychotic lunatic teachers. Any notable event period in the fifth grade that... I do remember coming home from school and packing uh, some fruit snacks, Star Crunch, I'm sure, oatmeal cream pie, and putting them in my lunchbox. I wish I could tell you what kind of lunchbox I had, but I I don't recall. And hopping on my Free Spirit bike. Banana seat? No, it was more like a knockoff Huffy. I wanted it to be a trick bike. It wasn't. (laughs) Yeah, pegs? No, and I wish, no, I, okay. I wish. sorry, go ahead. That's all right. Um, I made it all the way out to the Shell Station and beyond that, uh, the ramp to go to Indianapolis because I was going to go see my dad. Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. And it just so happened Dick Saltz pulled up. As and, you were going onto the ramp? Mm-hmm, and picked me up and told me how lucky I was because there was a uh, state trooper that would have picked me up. He was not far behind Dick and I would have been in big trouble. And then I had to go uh, have appointments with Mrs. Becker and I had to have uh, therapy sessions with her. Because you were running away? Mm-hmm. Were you running away? Did you gonna go, Were you going to go live with your dad or just visit him? Oh, I was going to live there. I was going to live there. I jumped off the roof so my brother didn't see me. <laughs> mm-hmm. What did you land on? Bushes? My feet. <laughs> In the grass. It wasn't. It was not that big of a deal. It was a nice incline. Did you have any concept of how far away it was? No. Like an hour for our listeners. No, not at all. I was gonna do it. <laughs> Maybe stop about Crawfordsville for a star crunch. Yes. <laughs> well, there was a uh, the rest area. I think. There. <laughs> yeah, there was still yeah. one at that time. Yep. If you want to interject anything, remember. Uh, I just I remember I had two favorite books. Peppermints in the Parlor, and A View from the Cherry Tree. I've never heard of either one of those. Were they Judy Blooms? No, they were actually fifth grade reading. They were kind of a thriller, suspense, mystery type. Like Wait Till Helen Comes? Yes. Yes. Is that something you would have read in the fifth grade? Yes. Or Dollhouse Murders? Wait Till Helen Comes just, you know, that's a scary title. It is. Because Helen was like a ghost, right? Yes. That she come across around a wishing well or something. Yes. What was the first book you said? <laughs> Peppermints in the Parlor. What was Peppermints in the Parlor about? Like, I just remember sitting in our circle and Mrs. Boo reading that specifically. Or, yes. You don't remember what relevance the Peppermints had to the parlor? No. Dang, I'm actually going to look it up because I'm curious now. Yeah. And a view from the cherry tree. What, what were they viewing know. from the cherry tree? Uh, a murder. They thought they really? saw a murder. Did yes. they? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to have to Google that too. Were you a Simpsons fan? Yes. And you were watching, were you allowed to watch around this time? Because it was kind of scandalous for no, some reason. No, I was not, but I did have a Bart Simpson sleeping bag. Did the you? first sleeping bag I owned. Where'd you get it? Kmart. Who got it for you? My dad. My Well, my mom and my dad. They got it for me for Christmas, and it had, it was a light blue with stars on it, and Bart was had his little 
speech bubble and it said sleeping's for wimps man <laughs> i really thought that was bar right there when you did that did you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you specifically ask for it or did they just know that you liked it or it was a fad and they bought it oh uh, they just knew that i liked it so you, but you weren't allowed to watch it no and my dad oddly enough he was a computer guy built computers fixed computers and um, in his office he happened to look out of the window and in the tree Somebody had put a Bart Simpson figurine in there. Uh, and I'm not talking about, I'm talking about this with the hard spikes for his head. Yeah, right, like plastic. Yeah, and he brought that, got that for me. Did he? Brought, <laughs> got it out of the tree and gave it to you? <laughs> How long did you have it after that? Oh, shoot. Um, I would say a good three, four years. Yeah? Yeah. Did you sleep with it? No. 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 Did you ever tuck him into the sleeping bag? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I just thought. You yeah, know, I know. Like... <laughs> Which family or household from any show in the top ten are you taking as your first choice for a neighbor? Roseanne, hands down. You want the Connors living yes, next to you? Yes, absolutely. Are they going to be okay with you just walking in the front door unannounced? Oh, yeah. Yes. Because Crystal and Jackie did? Or because you guys are just going to gel that well? Definitely gel that well. I am Roseanne. <laughs> I am Rosen. I, I feel like I, my my kids tell me that my laugh. I've had other people tell me that my laugh is a strong resemblance to Roseanne. Reading Rainbow or Mr. Rogers? Oh shoot! The Reading Rainbow theme song is my alarm. For real? Yes. Now? Mm-hmm. Butterfly in the sky. Yes, it is. Were you watching it in the fifth grade? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Rogers, I think I had already grown out of, but Reading Rainbow was still. A big play player in my house. Specifically for you, because you are the youngest guest I've had on so far. Oh, okay. So you were younger in 1990 than anybody else I've had on, so I, I tried to find something that a younger person would have been watching in early 1990. Nice. Something that I hadn't thought of. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So I went back to see, like, in Reading Rainbow was going on at this time, and Mr. Rogers, and uh, so I figured maybe one of those two you'd be watching. Were you a regular Reading Rainbow watcher? Was, was that LeVar Burton? It was, yes. Was it on PBS? Yes, it was. Fun memories, huh? Yes. All right. Do your kids now watch it? No, they do watch Sesame Street. Did you watch Sesame Street in 1990? No, I was grown. I was outgrown. DuckTales or Rescue Rangers? DuckTales. Hands down, I can still sing the theme song. Yeah. Because of the theme song, characters or plot? Um, Both, characters and plot, and I never was a big Chippendale fan. Who's the best character between those two shows? DuckTales and Rescue Rangers. The scientist next, right next door. Did he have, like, Sorry. red hair? Yes. And he was kind of like your disheveled scientist. Yes. Absent-minded. Mm -hmm. You know what? Let's just go with certainty. Um, Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. He got to swim through coins. Yeah, they were like... Who wouldn't want to do that? Right, and there's nothing suspect about the ability to swim in a pile of coins. Absolutely not. <laughs> You're homesick from school. Yes. What's on the television? The Price is Right. That was going to be my first guess. My second guess would have been Bob Ross. No, never watched Bob Ross. Oh, did watch Bob Ross a lot, but I, I'm, I was trying to think of a time when maybe he would have been on. But no, it was definitely game shows. Early 80s reruns, like The Love Boat? Yes. No, not The Love Boat. G game shows, for sure. How many TVs did you have in your house in 1990? Two. One in the living room? Yes. One in the playroom? Nope. In my room, with rabbit ears. Oh, really? Yes. All right. Let's check out some sports. Okay. The February 26th issue of Sports Illustrated had Buster Douglas on the cover with a rectangle to the right that said, Rocky Lives, heavyweight champion Buster Douglas. The cover of the February 26th Sporting News had a large picture of LSU's Chris Jackson on the left with the words, How high can LSU fly? Super sophomore Chris Jackson leads a team loaded with talent. In the upper right corner was a picture of Isaiah Thomas with the words, Not so bad, boys. The Detroit Pistons have a new image as defending NBA champs. The bottom right corner had a picture of Nadav Hannafeld with the words, From the Mideast to the Big East. Nadav Hannafeld of Israel scores his points for Connecticut. Were you a fan of any particular NBA team around this time? Did you care at all? I still had my, I think, my love for Michael Jordan, like everybody else. The Bulls. Trader. You're in yes. Pacer country. Yeah. That's all right. I thought I was a Lakers fan. That's all right. Because Maddie Johnson and those guys, they dominated the 80s, you know? I, I had a, uh, you know, the basketball goal 
that hangs over your door. I had uh, pistons in like the generic autograph ball. I would go ham. <laughs> like you were like you were one of the bad boys. Oh yeah, yes. So if you had been in the NBA at this time, you would have been a bad boy. Uh, absolutely. Throwing bows for sure. Okay. Yes. All right. Against the Bulls. Yes. Because they were the Pacers' rival. And, and just with the right elbow, because remember this one was broke. That's right, because you tripped backwards over the pitcher's mound. Yes. Did you watch any professional wrestling around this time? You better believe it. Yeah? Yes. Who was your guy? How about an impression? One rope, two rope, third rope. Our local boy. Yes. The ultimate warrior. Yes. And my dad took my brother and I to uh, one of the matches in Indy. No way. Yeah, Market Square Arena. Around this time? Mm-hmm. Ah. Oh, do you remember who you saw? Um, the warrior was there. How in 30 years of friendship has this never come up? I don't know. I don't know. Because I thought I was jealous over Tara having seen Paula Abdul in concert. Mm-hmm. And that you just took the top spot of my jealousy. At where? How close were you? Oh, I, not quite nosebleeds. But we were, we were um, pretty darn close. Like if, if there would have been a jumbotron at that time, I would not have needed the jumbotron to see the action in the ring. When I think back on things I wish I would have done in the late 80s, early 90s, attending a WWF event is top two, probably. I don't even know what number one would be because I just think, man, if I could go back and watch the golden era of wrestling live, I never got to. I'm sorry. It it really was uh, a sight to behold. I believe, especially the warrior coming out and shaking. (laughs) Yes. Yes. How intense. Did you watch it on TV as well? Um, I did. Funny story. Uh, I, I always thought that those rabbit ears were lame and like... They actually came in handy because, and I don't know how this, how we perfected this, but my brother and I uh, got this uh, thing going where, you know, oh, bend it, go forward. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, but I remember getting SummerSlam and events like that for oh, free. Oh, wow. For free. Yeah, and Combo had a system for that, too. He explained on his episode where he had, like, two boxes and used one for, like, the video and one for the audio or oh, something. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I missed out on all that. I just got, like, recaps on USA Network. Lift your lift your left leg up a little higher, a little higher. Yes. Get the aluminum. It was great. On the TV in your room? Yes. Or in the living room? My room. Okay. For some reason that matters to me. I need that full visual. Oh, I yes. need to know what room you were in. Did you and your brother act out the moves and stuff on each other? Yes. You gave like flying elbow smashes? Yes. We nice. were pretty brutal. Favorite tag team? I knew it. <laughs> Dude. I did call that one oh. right. Brandon would chase me around the house, especially when I, you know, racked him or did something terrible to him. And he, you knew Brandon was going to come unleashed when the face got all red and he just got this look in his eyes and he would do the bushwhacker bush moves. <laughs> yes, you knew he meant business. When he, when he put the camo pants on and the lift hat. your head. Yep, he had the hat to the side and everything. <laughs> he was serious. Were they at the Market Square Arena? Uh, I don't, I don't believe so. Mm. All right, let's take a look at print. Okay. The top book for every day this week was Oh, the Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. The Adventures of Superman, number 463 this month, was titled Speed Kills. In it, a villain whose name I can't pronounce gets Superman and Flash to race to see who is faster by saying it's the only way he'll leave. After getting past multiple obstacles set by the villain, Flash wins but believes that Superman led him. Superman denies it and the villain leaves. In the Uncanny X-Men number 258, Wolverine remains captured by the Hand and must fend off psychic attacks from Psylocke. It was part of the Acts of Vengeance crossover storyline. In the February 26th issue of Time magazine, written across the middle in yellow letters were the words, Predators Fall, and underneath it it said, The collapse of Drexel Burnham, the house that Junk built, is only the latest of Wall Street's woes. So where are the tears? The lower half of a man's face is cut off by the bottom of the cover with the words Deposed Dealmaker Michael Milken. At the top was a smaller picture with the words Germany, the rush to unity. On the cover of the February 26th issue of People magazine was a large picture of Donald Nirvana Trump on the left with the words Trump vs. Trump, billion dollar blow up on the right. Underneath it it said, She wants the plaza, he'll take Manhattan. America's gaudiest couple square off in an old-fashioned battle over babes and bucks. Direct from Aspen, Palm Beach, and New York City, here's the latest dish. At the top it said, 
the dazzling model behind the Trump split with the picture of Marla Maples to the right. The March 2nd issue of Entertainment Weekly featured Sean Connery on the cover with the words, The Hunt for Red October, The Last Cold War. Down the left side were the subtitles, TV, Elvis, How This King Sings, Print, Illuminating Soviet Women, Video, Oscar Hopeful Filled of Dreams, Ads, Resale Values, and Kids, Brave Tales of the New World. The cover of the February issue of National Geographic featured a seal with the words Between Monterey Tides in large print across it. Beneath that were the subtitles At the Paskins Along the Yukon, A Soviet Sea Lies Dying, Common Ground, Different Dreams, The U.S.-Canada Border, and Chestnuts, Making a Comeback? Along the very bottom were the words See Bali, Masterpiece of the Gods, Wednesday, February 7th on PBS TV. Did you have any magazine subscriptions in 1990? Dude, I want to say wrestling. WWF Magazine? Yes. Hands down, my favorite magazine from this time era because it was so colorful Mm -hmm. and just, oh man, glossy. Yes. Like, I wish I had a wall of 80s, 90s WWF Magazine covers. I am going to throw another wrestler in there. Mm Mm-hmm. I was in love with Brett the Hitman Hart. Awesome, dude. Brett was awesome. Who was cooler, had a cooler persona than Brett Hart? I did. I remember leaving Market Square Arena with the glasses. You did? You got a pair of those? If I had a pair of those originals, like OG Brett, Mm -hmm. I would frame them and put them over my fireplace. Rolling Stone or Spin? Spin. Because it was more edgy? Yes. I shouldn't put words in your mouth. I should have let you told them. Well, I was going to use the word unfiltered. Okay. So... More underground. Yes, it was. I feel like uh, looking back, it had a lot more um, less known bands. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was a good come up for. Yep, absolutely. Underground scene. Like their writers were just out of college and had a finger on the pulse of the college music scene. Yeah. Whereas Rolling Stone had pedigree. In Superman this month, Superman and Flash get pitted against each other to see who is faster. Who would you have guessed? Superman. Any particular reason? Just because he's Superman, he can... <clears throat> um, I did not. I was not a big Flash guy, but I watched all of the... I grew up with Christopher Reeve, Superman, mm-hmm. and he just uh, was unstoppable. Yeah, it was like those scenes where he's like, didn't he like change he did. time by... After Lois, the gas station fell on Lois. I'm with you. Were you fast in 1990? Gazelle-like. Yeah? Yes. In what sports would you have been applying your blistering speed? Probably the 400... And it was very important to have speed uh, in long jump. And uh, it's okay. I knew that they were using me, but Awana. You used your blistering speed in the Awana Olympics? Yes. Yes. We won. Do you have a picture of your Awana Olympics team? No, I don't. Do you? I do. I'm not surprised. Okay. I never won a derby, but I don't. Yeah, did I, dude. I think those things were rigged. I think so, too. Yeah. Somebody got, like, the preferential mm-hmm. kit. I wonder how many of our viewers are familiar with a one or participated in a one Olympics. I would like to hear from you with a comment on any of my, my videos or anything. If you, if you were, I'd like to hear. Oh, the places you'll go by Dr. Seuss was the top book this week. I had no idea Dr. Seuss was still making books into the nineties, but after looking into it, he had done two in the eighties and then this was his last one. Did you go anywhere in early 1990? Florida. Yeah. Any, uh, we took a lot of memory? vacation. Sorry. Uh, my mom took my brother and I, and my brother pulled a fire alarm in the hotel and they all had to evacuate. Wow. Yes. What? Yes. Did he get implicated? No. I mean, by my mom. Ooh. It was bad. It was Are you bad. guys like standing outside with everybody else and you're <laughs> nervous? <Yes. laughs> you're going to know it was him? Who could it be? Yeah. Yes. There's no way he's getting away with that today. There's cameras no. everywhere. Yeah. Just impulsively? like. Yes, because he was not a bad kid. <laughs> all of a sudden. <laughs> Brandon Zachary. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. If you were playing Nintendo in 1990, whose Nintendo were you playing, if not your own? If you didn't have one? Nobody. So you didn't play Nintendo at all in 1990? No. My dad got the, uh, he kept the Nintendo at his house. And I was uh, very much into Mario Brothers too. Yeah, awesome. So you, you did have access to one, but it was at your dad's? Yes. Did he have any of the, like the power glove or the, no. the big joystick? Did you ever see that big joystick that came no. on like the huge platform? It had, no. like, rapid-fire turbo automatic, so if you're playing Contra, you could have, like, Rrr. We were not. <laughs> you just <laughs> we had, one like, of those. Just we, two we controller, ones. Yeah, no. Two controller, one duck gun. Hunt yeah. Gun. Yes. Backtrack here. My Aunt Lou, 
Josh had one, and I remember playing Duck Hunt up at her house. Any other memories or thoughts about 1990? Oh, not for cheerleading. I didn't make the team. Were you crushed? I was. Even no, like, I didn't really want to make it. I knew it was a popularity contest, and so it kind of gauged where I was. And it was just kind of a big fat F you when I didn't get it. Yeah. Um, I still remember my cheer. I can still do my cheer. Uh, and I, I just thought, I don't, for some reason, I thought I was a shoe in. And did, I didn't get it. <laughs> did you pick your own cheer? No. No, the person that showed me that I actually had somebody come and train me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. But at tryouts, you had the ability to, to pick your own routine to put on display. Yes. They didn't have like some you had to pick from. Right. No. You could do whatever cheer you were comfortable with or, or had memorized. And this person that came to my house like a couple times a week for like maybe four weeks in advance. Uh, I mean, I had the moves down. I, you know, real stiff delivery and good toe touch. And Was the criteria that your, your mentor chose based on... On what? Like, what was she going for with the routine she chose for you? Um, she knew what the judges would be looking for. And uh, she thought that I would probably also get it, and I didn't. And I, I was crushed. I came home, and I remember sobbing on my bed. And I'm trying to think. Something really um, big happened that night to my mom to console me. And I can't remember what it was. Like a trigger, something that caused her to? Or she did something really big? She did something nice for me. And I don't remember what it was. But it was, uh, it got my mind. And then I I got the phone calls <laughs> from the girls in my class, you know. Oh, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. Well, no, because you got it. <laughs> All right? But they were supportive, though. So. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I remember all of us sitting on the stage in the NPR and them announcing the five people that got it, and my name wasn't mentioned. Only <laughs> five? Cried home. I ran like a little bee and just <laughs> <laughs> broke down. <laughs> broke down on my bed. That's that's really hard to hear. Yeah. I'm hurt for that, you. I shoved it down. <laughs> Until now. Yes. <laughs> You're going to run home as soon as you get there. <laughs> You can, you can do it on camera. Nobody's <laughs> judging. Here it comes. Yeah, right on the hat sideways. <laughs> it was <laughs> traumatic. Anything else? No. If you got it, I want to hear it. I know you have more memories coming the later we get into the 90s, so I will absolutely have you back on for those. I would love to be back. And as I get this show figured out and refined, yes. I'll have a better platform for you to express them. Okay. I would love that. Well, thank you, Brittany. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the 90s Week by Week. You can find links to all of our social media accounts on the 90sweekbyweek.com. Feel free to leave questions, comments, and suggestions. We are always looking for ways to improve the broadcast and appreciate your feedback. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on whatever audio streaming service you use to be notified when new episodes are uploaded. If you're interested in being a guest on the 90s Week by Week, fill out the questionnaire at the bottom of the90sweekbyweek.com. Till next time.